everyone. I'm Ariane Till, national host of Verify, and I'm here with a number of members of my team, Mauricio Chamberlain, Aaron Jones, and Eric Garland. We are working on a number of questions surrounding the teacher shortage across the nation. And the claim that we're addressing today is, do 94% of teachers pay for their supplies out of pocket? And so we have a, an expert with us today. His name is Juan. Juan, do you mind introducing yourself by saying your first and last name and telling us what you do and where you're from? Sure. Hi, my name is Juan Berizuela and I'm the public relations manager at Donors Choose and I'm based out of New York City. Can you talk to us a little bit about what Donors Choose does as a platform and how people can engage with it? Yes, yeah, so a Donors Choose is a nonprofit organization that allows the public to support teachers with the classroom resources and the extra supplies that they need for their classrooms and their schools. Um, so we support public school teachers across the country. Four in five public schools have at least one teacher that has used Donors Choose. And when a supporter fully funds a Donors Choose project, we ship the supplies directly to the teacher's school. It makes it easy for the teacher. It also offers some transparency for our donors. We have a number of questions around the type of data that you're able to collect from the donorship that you have, your base. And so the first one is, how much funding is requested on an annual basis through your platform? Well, to give you an idea, in the last school year, we were able to raise over $180 million for public school classrooms. Um, and that is a figure that we have not seen since before the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw a dip in project submissions during the pandemic. Teachers were overwhelmed. They didn't quite have the bandwidth to submit projects to websites like Donors Choose. Um, but the average live project on our website does cost around $700. That gives an idea of how long it takes um, based on uh, donations of $50 or sometimes $75 from donors, how long it may take for a project to get fully funded on our website. Do you have that qualitative data from your teachers during the pandemic that said, we weren't able to put in these requests because we were so overwhelmed? How did you get that information? Yes. So during the pandemic, uh, our donors choose team noticed that dip in projects. So we talked to our teachers and we let them share with us um, what was going on for them. Uh, we passed the mic over to them and they did tell us that between remote learning, hybrid learning and the circumstances, the many different circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and its effect on public schools, um, between all of those factors, they just did not have the bandwidth or the time to sit at their computer, submit a classroom project to donors choose. Um, so we're really um, we're really pleased to see donors come in strong in the last year because we've seen that change. We've seen many more teachers submitting their projects to donors choose. And it's also a big help to our district partnership program as well as our partnership with, uh, with state education departments. Can you talk to me a little bit about how these donations help teachers, not just in the classroom, but in terms of job retention, how do these donations help those teachers? We did a study with the University of Michigan uh, and they found that having a funded donors choose project makes it 22% more likely for that teacher to stay in the classroom in the school year. Um, we know there is a great resignation happening. So we are keeping tabs on that and making sure that the way our website is functioning for our public school teachers, that it caters to what they need and in a way that is as speedy as possible, especially given that data on how having a donor's choose project and help keep them in the classroom. Have you seen any trends in terms of regions within the United States where more requests are being made from? And if so, what are those trends that you're seeing? We do see that mostly urban and suburban communities in the country have teachers on donors choose. That's something that we really want to take a closer look at, and we want to make a bigger effort in reaching those rural communities. We know that many rural communities don't have the same access to connectivity um, to the internet as urban areas of the country do. So while we do know that urban areas are at the top of that list, making up the teachers who use our sites, um, we really want to make it a point to highlight rural communities. And we definitely empower donors to, to give to classroom projects that speak to them. But if they especially want to give to rural communities, that is an option to filter in our search page on our website. Do you have data around the types of requests that are being made in terms of specific funding for certain items? Is it paper product or is it a trip that people are taking? What are the most requested fund types? 
Yes, so as of this month of August, during this back to school season, we have a list of the top five projects. So we have around um, between 10 to 15 different categories of resources that teachers can ask for. And at the top of the list right now are educational kits and learning games. So think like for a Spanish class, Scrabble in Spanish, uh, Spanish conversation starters on, on, uh, on word blocks. Um, and second to that is flexible seating, which is something we've seen quite an uptick in in the last two or three years. So that's wiggle stools, floor cushions to provide a flexible learning environment and to help kids move a bit while sitting in class. And then a third on out of the top three is instructional technology. And this definitely saw a big jump during the COVID-19 pandemic. So one teacher in South Carolina, for example, recently got fully funded um, her project asking for headphones for her students while they play academic games in class on their Chromebooks. During the pandemic, a lot of headphones were requested and other types of related materials for students who were learning from home who needed that extra layer of, um, of less distraction, of more privacy as they're focusing with their siblings around or their family around at home. Um, so between those three, uh, those three categories make up the top, educational kits and learning games, flexible seating, and instructional technology as of today. Have you talked to the teachers that work with your site about what might cause them to leave the profession and what it would mean for them to have to leave the profession for whatever reason that was? There are various factors that could contribute to that. It could be from the way they feel about paying out of pocket for their own school supplies, um, or it could be a matter of uh, how supported they feel in the environment they work in. It could be as uh, as um, it could be a it could be at a micro level in the school environment. It could be a macro level of how they feel about learning. Uh, sorry about teaching the profession in general. Um, it's interesting because we actually did a, a study of male teachers of color or a report on male teachers of color. And we noticed that black male educators have a very unique experience from all their other kinds of peers of different demographic identities. And one of the things we saw is that black male educators who went to uh, historically black colleges and universities were even more engaging in the classroom. At the same time, we're noticing that black male educators are one of the um, one of the community groups within the profession that are leaving the soonest out or exiting the profession. So I think there is this interesting moment we're living in where we have a lot of engaging teachers who go above and beyond, but maybe they don't quite feel supported because of various factors, like I mentioned, purchasing things out of their own pocket for school supplies. Maybe they don't feel like their identity is being recognized in their profession. And um, that's what we're here for, to shed some light on that. Thank you. Who wants to jump in? I know we have a lot of questions. I know that you uh, discussed, we discussed that um, the types of school supplies, um, but um, it kind of blew my mind when you were talking about sometimes it can be furniture, it can be, it can be anything that a classroom needs. So when it comes to that, can you give us a description of what a school supply is for those people out there who don't understand that it's not only about pencils and crayons, it can be beyond that to things that actually are um, an, an item that can be used throughout the year beyond things that people can use, that students can use for uh, in class. Yeah, uh, classroom basics like pencils, paper, pens, um, those are things people expect to be the majority of school supplies. And while that takes up a big portion of, of the, the phrase school supplies or the group of school supplies, on our site, we have categories ranging from books to, I mentioned instructional technology to flexible seating, we also have projects focused on mental health and social emotional learning. We have projects asking for jerseys uh, and they're projects that are requested by coaches at schools that, that run a soccer team, for example. Uh, and with books uh, within each category, for example, with books, there are identity affirming books. So while there may be the classic books that a lot of teachers request uh, that we're used to teachers requesting or books that we expect to be on most school book lists, there are some teachers who request identity affir affirming books written by um, by people who reflect the identity of the students in the classroom that help them feel seen. Um, so that's a really good example. More often these days, we are seeing teachers request um, either classic books or modern books that usually we don't see on book lists, but that affirm the identities of their students. Um, has this challenge uh, of, 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 of teachers having to raise funds for school supplies has been happening for many years, decades, uh, and also has the, the COVID-19 pandemic made it 
better or worse? Uh, and my last question will be, um, is this all caused because of, of students being unable to afford the supplies or the school not providing enough? Or if you can expand on that, that would be great as well. Thank you. We know that teachers paying out of pocket is nothing new. And I, I think that actually the history of Donors Choose as an organization offers insight into that question of how long this has been happening for. Um, Donors Choose was founded in the year 2000 by Charles Best, uh, who was a high school teacher in the Bronx in New York, and he needed extra copies of a book for his students. And uh, Donors Choose has been around therefore for 22 years, and throughout our whole history, we've had teachers using our site looking to us as an additional channel for those resources that they seek, just like our own founder, Charles Best, in the year 2000. And with the pandemic, uh, we noticed that when the pandemic hit the country in 2020, we saw that dip in projects on donors choose and teachers shared their thoughts with us that they were very overwhelmed and didn't feel like they had the bandwidth to post on our site. Um, and because we knew that teachers were learning from home, uh, I'm sorry, because we knew that teachers were teaching from home, we decided to shift our model a little bit. And instead of shipping directly to the school where they were not teaching, shipping instead directly to their homes. Um, so that's one major part of how we pivoted during the pandemic, in addition to noticing that jump in instructional technology uh, projects that I mentioned before. And in regards to whether this is all because students can't afford supplies or their families can't afford them or the school isn't providing enough, it's a combination of both instances. On the one hand, our donors choose team knows that even a well-funded school district may not be able to provide the extra resources for teachers who want to go above and beyond with items like like wiggle stools, the flexible seating or VR headsets for those virtual reality field trips to world landmarks. We know districts don't have the funds to to um, to provide for items like those that really go the extra mile in the classroom. On the other hand, we also know that there are families who can't afford their children's supplies, especially families who come from low-income households and communities. And oftentimes, teachers on donors choose will request supplies that families can't afford. Thank you. Um, Juan, have you seen teachers from a specific level of education that are more in need than others? Like, for example, are elementary school teachers more in need than middle school teachers or high school teachers? Can you kind of speak to that? Yes, so it's been pretty consistent over the years that elementary school teachers make up the majority of our users on the donor shoes platform. To be very specific, the first uh, the first uh, level would be pre-K to second grade that seems to have uh, the most need on our on our site, followed by grades third through fifth, and then middle school and then high school. So elementary school projects definitely make up the majority of donors shoes. And so with this very high percentage of teachers having to use their own money for supplies. Are schools making any type of like reimbursement efforts or are they trying to do anything, the schools themselves or the school boards themselves to sort of try and lower that percentage? Yes, uh, that's where our district partnership program at Donors Choose comes in. We started it in the year 2019. And since then we've had over 600 school districts across the country uh, come on board and become a member of our district partnership program. What that means is that the district is assigned to collaborate with donors choose and have even that an even more transparent channel of communication when their teachers get a, a a project funded their principals get notified as well as their their district administration and their staff um and also it's an easier way for a school district to encourage their teachers to to follow technology guidelines for example there are some districts that uh, allow for Apple iPads to be purchased for the classroom and other districts that they have a contract with uh, Google Chromebooks. So using donors choose as a district partner as over 600 do in the country um, makes that connection more seamless and uh, just solidifies the, the trust that many donors have in us by also extending that trust with school districts. Hi Juan, I just wanted to know how does the donors choose process work? Like how do teachers request or can, how do people help, I guess, the teachers through this um, fundraising goal? Yeah, so if, if you're a teacher that teaches at a public school or a public charter school, you can go to Donors Choose and uh, just create a profile, it's very easy. And once you create a project, you should hear from our Donors Choose team in as little as three days as to whether it needs any edits or the title needs to be adjusted, and then your project will be um, live for donors to look at and for donors. Um, they can go to donorschoose.org and type in their favorite neighborhood or city, find their favorite childhood teacher to support on Donors Choose. I've actually done that myself. 
uh, search for projects that align with their passions. Maybe they're an author and they want to fund a book project. Um, but also they can get the latest on matching donations by our generous partners. And one thing I would love to know is that donors can also choose to support an equity focused school. And on Donors Choose, that is a school where at least 50% of students are students of color and where at least 50% of students come from low income households. And we know from a study by EdBuild, which inspired our equity focus, um, that school districts serving mostly students of color get $23 billion less in state and local funding annually. And so Donors Choose designates the label of equity focused schools on our platform so that donors can choose to empower those schools and join in the effort to combat racial and socioeconomic inequity in education. Have you heard from teachers themselves of sort of like a an average range of how much that they've had to spend? Has 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 a uh, teacher said, "Well, I've spent as much as this"? Um, are, are you seeing some sort of trend in those numbers? Yes, we actually recently did a survey of our teachers, and they told us that they spend out of pocket around seven hundred and fifty dollars um, in a given school year. Is there anything that we didn't ask you that you think it's important for our audiences to know or to understand, especially if you think there's some misinformation out there that regarding what we discussed today that you think it needs to be cleared out? Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, well, I think two things. First, that we know that teachers have gone have gone through a really unique, extraordinary time being in the classroom these past two or three years. And even before then, we know that teachers have not always um, felt that their job is easy. I mean, they they are with our children. They, some people say for longer than we see our children sometimes. And they have that huge responsibility of, of educating the future of society, of our country. And that is enough for me and hopefully for those listening to want to support a teacher. And especially in this time where we're still figuring things out, we're going back to schools and um, there's some measure in terms of like COVID-19 uh, COVID testing and masking that are being dropped. Um, and hopefully it's a sign that things are improving in terms of the pandemic, but teachers are also figuring things out as they go along alongside their students. So that's number one. And number two, what's really special about Donors Choose is that it provides public school teachers access to a national network of donors who want to support their classrooms. And we uh, we find that 75% of all dollars given come from people and organizations who don't personally know the teacher they're giving to. And ma the majority of that 75% are outside of the state of the teacher who put up the project, which is really extraordinary. Um, so this makes us especially effective for teachers working in communities that are impacted by socioeconomic inequity. How would you feel if there were a day when there was no need for your platform anymore because teachers had the resources that they needed? How would you feel? We hope that day comes to donors choose. And we've already talked about that day when it comes, um, when it does happen, and we hope it will soon. We will change our business model and pivot. Where, what is another way we can support teachers that are not addressing the things they need urgently? So when that day comes, when the teacher no longer, when no teacher in the country no longer needs to ask um, for help to fund the supplies for their classroom or those extra resources, we will definitely pivot our business model and still find a way to support teachers. How do you think teachers will react to that day? Do you think that there are teachers out there that are like, this will never happen? Or could you see it happening in the near future? I think. It's very fair to say there are a lot of emotions that come to whether that day will will come. There are a lot of emotions that 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 could be in response to about that day coming when teachers no longer have to pay out of pockets, especially among our teacher community. Um, we hope that when that day comes, that they will be extremely happy about it, and also pleased to hear that we would pivot our business model, that we would still support teachers in some way, um, whether it's um, having to do with something on the technological end of things and supporting teachers in the classroom in that regard. Because we are we are a very unique tech nonprofit. So we have that ability to, to pivot into that realm, realm of things a little bit more. Um, but we certainly hope that when that day comes that teachers are, are resting a little bit more with less stress about where to find their next classroom supply. Um, 